Welcome aboard the North Yorkshire Moors Railway for a journey back in time to the golden age of steam. Good afternoon, can I see tickets please? Every year half a million visitors come to marvel at these miracles of Victorian engineering. I came all the way from Ireland for this. Keeping it all on track are a dedicated team full of pride, passion and true Yorkshire grit. Oh, be honest, we love it. Engine shed manager Piglet is in charge of all things mechanical. I've just pranged it into the side of the building. Got that Miley Cyrus song in my head now. Boss Chris has to balance the books. I'm not the fat controller. Chief Boilersmith Mark must keep his engines in good health. We are the heart experts of, of the steam engines. Head of carriage and wagon Kieran makes sure the punters travel in style. I'm very good at style, you see. I mean, I'm a style icon. <laughs> this time, restoration of the Green Knight Loco gets off to a shaky start. Oh, there's a pipe there. Engine problems threaten to derail Mark and Emma's steam wedding. Barney! You are joking. I'm not. Oh, my God. <laughs> And petrol head Kieran makes a promise that ends up backfiring. I've done something very stupid. It's a roller coaster ride through glorious country. The Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard. We've got a ticket for the dog. It's high summer, and for the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, it's peak season. While the number of paying customers is up 5% on last year, if the railway is to continue to grow, it must make hay while the sun shines. It is very easy to look at a packed platform and think, great, everything's marvellous, that's all sorted. But we have to remind ourselves that costs still keep coming and we have to get ourselves through the winter period. So maximising every bit of income is vitally important. Weddings are something we're doing new that seems to be really developing and doing very well for us. And I think you can connect that romance of steam with the romance of a wedding, and it seems to be a marriage made in heaven. Just three years since becoming a licensed wedding venue, the railway has a whopping 22 booked for this summer season. In charge of onboard nuptials is hospitality and events manager Tim. Voila. You do have to be unflappable, and I am quite flappable. <laughs> Tim has a pragmatic approach if everything goes pear-shaped during the reception. If there's a train delay, then we fill in that time by plying them with a bit more drink. <laughs> One of the weddings this summer season is extra special for the staff of the railway. In less than a week, head boiler smith Mark is to marry his steam-mad former apprentice, Emma. If it all goes like we talked about, it should all run pretty smoothly, shouldn't it? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but before the big day, bridegroom Mark still has plenty of work to do. He's in charge of restoring the boiler of the Green Knight, a loco that was once a star of the railway. He's got his work cut out on this one, lifting a 14-ton boiler from the loco's chassis. I'm going to see how it hangs, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Overseeing the boiler removal is mechanical foreman Nick. Along with Mark, he's supervising trainee crane driver Chummers as he tackles his first precision lift. Chummers has done some training, but he's never lifted anything out. So he's lifted wheel sets around and he's driven it loads, but this is the first time he's going to go for it. Good luck, Chummers. It's also the first time for lift supervisor Barney. Oh, get off! <laughs> so, a training day with a 93-year-old steam crane and 14 tonnes of boiler to move. All right, so that's set for up. Yeah. Little wheels in. What could possibly go wrong? Right up. Whoa. Ready when you are. Nice and steady. Barney's strange hand signals seem to be doing the trick until... Mm, what was that? <laughs> Free now. I'm just uh, empty my trousers. <laughs> We're going to have to represent the chainsaw because the front end's sat. 
the boiler has pitched forward on the chassis. And now, if it's lifted any further, it's in danger of slipping free of its fastenings. It's not what Mark needs just before his wedding. While Mark looks forward to marriage, engine shed boss Piglet seems to be trying to wreck his with the addition of a new lady in his life. We've got my little engine, Lucy, here. He's given in to a midlife crisis and bought himself a 128-year-old Belgian steam tram to restore. I, I must admit, having two women in your life is quite challenging, you know. But the renovation job's taking up most of his spare time, which hasn't gone down well at home. It's a bit risky at the moment, but I'll get it finished, you know. I, I don't want to end up owning the steam engine and end up being single, you know what I mean? So that, that's definitely a no-no, so... Uh... I need to get it finished and get my life back. Get my wife back. Piglet's a busy man. Today he's visiting a local steam railway to check up on an engine that the NYMR has lent them for the summer. So I've come down to see the J27. Um, it's an engine that's owned and operated by the Northeastern Locomotive Preservation Group, but its home base is on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. And this summer, we've let the engine come out and operate on the uh, Wensleydale Railway, which is a railway I've never actually visited, even though it's only about 45 minutes from my house. And so it'd be nice to come out, see how it's been performing after its overhaul, and just go for a ride. So I'm quite looking forward to it, actually. Hello, Richard. All right, yeah, nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? I'm very well, yeah, yourself? Oh, not so bad, yeah. Lending engines to other railways is not just an act of goodwill. It makes business sense. Both railways benefiting from the publicity of a guest loco reaching a new audience. Has it made a difference to the railway having the steam engine here? I think it has, yeah. It's been a short visit, but a very intense visit. Yeah. You know, working yeah. six days a week, two twins a day. Right. So it's been really, really busy, yeah. So it's yeah. wheels have barely stopped turning then since happens. it's been here. It's happened every day, yeah. Wensleydale engineer Martin Ashworth is preparing the J27 for work today. In his short time in charge, he's made himself at home in the likeable locomotive. Morning, Martin. Ah, morning, Paul. All right. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Andy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to the Cavalier J27. Yeah, I'm fairly familiar with it, yeah, like. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You enjoying it? You having oh, it? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my fourth day on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's great. Really yeah, yeah. Good. So are you uh, you just oiling up now and getting it ready? Just and the oiling up, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Just, just bring the pressure around slightly, and then we're going to do a brake test. Yeah. And now onto the train and away. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. am I all right to come for a ride with you then? Absolutely. Absolutely. More than welcome. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. It's not a line I've ever been down before. Oh, it's fabulous. When it comes to work-life balance, the two steam buffs share a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say it nearly cost me my marriage when I bought a steam engine, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to risk buying another one just yet. There are many local owners' wives who don't know their husband's own engines. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what they say about the, the NYMR stands for now your marriage is ruined. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fine line, mate, that we all tread. By complete coincidence, Martin already knows all about Lucy, Piglet's new prized possession. So you were born in 1980? I was born in 1980. What were you doing in 1980? <laughs> I was working for a Dor Dorothea Restoration Engineers in Whaley Bridge, and I was aged 24. <laughs> The last steam engine that I bought was restored at Dorothy it, it, it was indeed, and it came to me at Buxton, and I fitted it with all the vacuum and got it all... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you know it, then? I oh, know it very well. Right, I've got okay. a picture of me driving it somewhere at home. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here you go, Piglet. A photo of Martin in your engine Lucy in 1988. Stoked by this happy coincidence, Piglet gets his hands dirty to help power the J27 through the stunning Wensleydale countryside. Coming up, Mark and his team use some precision engineering techniques on the Green Knight. A mystery engine fault calls for drastic measures. There we go. How does that look? 
and baby Rupert adds to the atmosphere of Yorkshire Day. Is it you, Rupert? <laughs> Have you done something? <laughs> At the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, the engine shed crew have hit a snag as they try to get the boiler out of the Green Knight locomotive. Right, you're fighting against the chain now. And the two trainee crane operators, Chummers and Barney, have begun to draw a crowd. Driving test with 10 people watching, 10 people criticising. Whenever he shouts, stop, you're like, oh, what do I do? With the boiler perched precariously on the chassis, Mark makes some not-so-subtle adjustments to the rigging. Let's see if it'll move now. Looks like he's hammered out a solution. Over to Chummers and Barney to finish the lift. Almost there. Which reveals a new problem. In the years the boiler's been in the engine, it's picked up a little surface rust. Get the rust off it. Enough to fuse the ash pan to the boiler. Time for a bit more precision engineering. Fingers clear. With the ash pan successfully detached, the team can complete the boiler removal. First lift. Good job, Arlad. Well done, mate. Didn't kill anybody. It's thumbs up for Barney and Chummers. Yeah, spawn. Good yeah. job. It's just the start of the Green Knight's restoration, but Mark's confident his team can breathe new life into this beautiful old engine. We work on the heart of the loco. You know, without this bit, the rest of the loco is is pretty much useless. It needs steam to run. We're the ones who, who do the boiler work to, to create that. So, you know, for us, it's we are the heart experts of, of the steam engines. Time to go home now, ready to start again tomorrow morning. For now, Mark's got more pressing commitments as the railway prepares for his wedding at the weekend. When apprentice Emma first met head boilersmith Mark, she was knocked head over heels, literally. Chin. What was the tube? Yeah. yeah. That's me told, isn't it? Despite this shaky start, things soon got steamy, and before long, baby Matilda was on the scene. <laughs> if that is not an excited baby to see steam trains, I don't know what is. <laughs> Today, Mark is giving Matilda one of the most important lessons of any modern workplace the safety briefing. First day in the shed, do your induction course. This is exit and entrance, fire exit, assembly point. Yes, see, you've got the fire assembly point down to the key, haven't you? Yeah, you know where that is. Safety is not a laughing matter, young lady. <laughs> this is one of Emma's first visits back to work since Matilda was born, and life has become a far cry from her days at the railway. I'm getting to the point now where I'm, I'm missing it quite a lot, and I started knitting and crocheting. That's how depressing it got at home. Like, no offence to people that knit or crochet, but I'm 21. <laughs> but this isn't just a nostalgia trip. The couple are making final wedding plans, and most importantly, they want the engine that drew them together to be the one that pulls their reception train. The B1 played a starring role in the couple's love story. This was a little bit special seeing as that me and Emma were out with this engine when I proposed with her. So this engine's got a little bit of something more special. Being here on the railway has its perks. One of the perks is we can use the railway, and that's what we're doing, using the railway for our wedding. But there's a hitch. The B1 has been pulled off the line for a service and full safety inspection. As part of the process, we strip the engine, we wash it out, we, we put it back together, and then we steam test it. We bring it up to its normal operating pressure. Until that point, which is Friday morning, we won't actually know if it's fit to go. On Saturday, this is pulling my wedding train. So, if this isn't ready, there's half a chance I might get pulled by a diesel. I don't really want that, and the wife to be, she's really not going to like that. So, uh, yeah, it's I'm trying to put a bit of pressure on the lads. Really, really, really need this one on time. 
My life depends on it. <laughs> Mark and Emma's friends at the NYMR are mucking in for their special day. Head of carriage and wagon Kieran isn't just a steam buff. He's a petrol head too, and he's promised to provide Mark with a spectacular wedding car. I thought, I can get him a car. I'm a good mate of his. I'll sort him out, I'll get him a car. He wants a muscle car, so it's a 1967 Chevy Camaro. What's pretty cool, but uh, he's been in our workshop now, 17 years getting restored, and it's still not actually hit the road yet, so this weekend will probably be its first ride on the road. But there's a problem. Kieran's mate Sean has been trying to ready the car, but all is not well. I got home about half an hour ago. Oh, God, we moved it and it's just not right. It's just out. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Although the car sounds good, big time. it won't go in gear. We have serious gearbox problems. And a car that doesn't move isn't much use, however good it looks. Can't make some phone calls to get me out of this mess, can you, for his wedding? Um, you've got to weekend, haven't we? Saturday, I've got to. So we're quitting it fine, aren't we? Mm. On the railway, it's business as usual, as preparations are in full swing for the annual Yorkshire Day Pullman service. It's tomorrow. And dining train manager Jill is on a last-minute dash... Granny's day off, and we're having to go shopping for the railway again. ..to pick up the final ingredients. Jill is looking after grandson Rupert, while daughter and head chef Sammy is preparing tomorrow's menu. Jill's husband Paul, who also works at the railway, is coming along to help. He's a big fan of Yorkshire Day. Yorkshire Day is all about celebrating everything great in Yorkshire. So we've got West Yorkshire, South, East and North Yorkshire. We're all Yorkshire. And it's a chance just to sort of be proud of where we're from and what we do. Our sort of um, accents we're proud of, our Yorkshire accents. We're proud of the food that we produce. We're proud of the area that we live in. And we just like to sort of say, we're from Yorkshire, this is Yorkshire. It's all good in Yorkshire. Got it? It's important that special events like the Yorkshire Day celebration are a big success for the railway in its quest to keep the revenue rolling in. So great attention to detail has gone into hosting an authentic experience that will make it an event to remember. It's total Yorkshire menu, yeah. Everything's 40 mile radius, definitely. One of the most important items on the menu will be the liquid refreshment. Bordeaux it might not be, but Yorkshire now boasts a thriving winemaking industry, and Rydale is the northernmost commercial vineyard in Britain. We've just arrived at Rydale Vineyard, so hopefully when uh, Rupert's finished feeding, we'll go and find some wine to try, ready for Yorkshire Day tomorrow. Sounds like a tough job, Jill, but someone's got to do it. So what have we got so here then, this Jack? This is our rosé, uh, oh, so lovely. just a Rondo grape variety. Very fruity, really fresh. There we are. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's a rosé you were hoping for, wasn't it? Mmm. Oh, that is lovely, Jack. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, Jack. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Next on tomorrow's menu is a shelfishly guarded Yorkshire secret. How many did we say? 16. That's right. What we got? Oh, Riddlington Bay Crab, yeah. The largest shellfish pot in Europe. Okay, three. With the fresh Bridlington Bay crabs collected, it's time to head home and debate whether the smell in the car is the seafood or something else. <laughs> is it you, Rupert? Have you done something? <laughs> Back at the railway, the peak summer season means the NYMR is running its gold timetable, with 17 services answering the demands of up to 2,000 passengers per day. With such a crammed schedule and vintage engines working at their limits, there's bound to be the odd hiccup. And Eric Tracy has run into trouble. We've discovered a fault with the water valve on the injector. 
We can't close the valve when we actually shut the valve. The water's going out into the track, so we're going to have to declare the engine a failure, uh, take it up to shed, but until it is actually taken a look, you know, we don't know what it is. But this is no ordinary job. The problem is in the tender, a huge sealed portable water tank for the engine, and the only way to find it is to go inside. The fitter will have to climb into the tender, come all the way through to the front, and see if you can find out what the problem is. It'd be like a drowned rat when he's finished. He'll be covered in water and muck, and he'll look a right state. And the lucky fitter on duty today is Chummers. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great, yeah. It's nice and warm in there and wet. <laughs> see you moving. It's on. Although the water's been emptied, the slimy residue left inside the tender calls for protection. I look better than that. <laughs> there we go. How does that look? <laughs> This must be what it's like to climb inside a giant kettle. I've got to go on my back. I'm going to scoot along. What a glamorous job. Finally, Chummers makes his way to the front of the tender and identifies the problem. This here was over traveling and jamming on top of here. With a big shove, and a bit of brute force, it's, it's managed to sort it out. So that is working absolutely spot on. Lovely cold water. With the valve freed and functioning normally, the loco can rejoin the busy gold timetable service. Jobs are good. <laughs> right, I'll get some water back in this thing. Look after her. But it's a reminder that with heritage steam engines, breakdowns can happen at any time. Coming up, another engine failure puts Mark and Emma's wedding plans in danger. Molly! You are joking. I'm not. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Kieran struggles to come up with an alternative wedding car and gets waylaid by a ferret. And he's gone to sleep on me. <laughs> With Mark and Emma's wedding imminent, they're meeting organiser Tim and volunteer Pete to iron out the final details. Hi. You're a happy little thing, aren't you? Friday afternoon, we've obviously got all the decorations and stuff that need to go on the train. Right. Now, most people want every little aspect of their wedding day to be perfect, but Mark here is taking this to new levels. I do have one question. Yeah. Uh, the sausages. Mm -hmm. Are they in batter or is it jumbo sausage without batter? What do you want? For mine, I'll have a batter sausage. Can we keep them all the same? Just a normal sausage. Oh. Yeah. Just have normal sausage. You'd rather have batter? I, pref I would prefer batter sausage if there's one going, but if, it, if you want to keep them all the same, have more sausage and chips, that's fine for me. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. We'll do you one in batter. Well, I like the batter sausage. If they're going to get me a batter sausage, being the groom and all, I can just see there being a fight breaking out on the train for a rush for the battered sausage. So uh, I'm already going to have to be on my wits when we get to Whitby to make sure that they get in there straight away and I'm get sure that battered sausage. You're the groom, so. could be a, there could be a fight on our hands for a battered sausage. Here. It could be a food fight. We have to get, we have to cover your dress up. Make sure you don't get any battered sausage splashes on your dress. But organiser Tim has bigger fish to fry. I'm a born worrier, so I, and I don't think a bit of stress is uh, a bad thing. At least it means you're conscientious. They're having ice cream as a pudding. My worst nightmare would be that we either forget to pick it up in Gromont or that we get to Gothland and it's melted. While Tim worries about his battered sausages and melting puds, the NYMR catering team have got their own troubles to deal with. Today is Yorkshire Day, celebration of all things flat cap and whippet like. Is that advertising? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ta and the railway will be hosting a four course on board banquet to celebrate. It's important that themed events like this are a success to reach new customers, particularly locals. 
But when head chef Sammy turns up first thing, there's a problem. It looks like half the stuff's missing, but I'm hoping that maybe Edwin just put it on the train last night to give me a hand. Oh, it's actually missing. <laughs> it's not a good start, because it'll be my fault, because I should have checked yesterday. A phone call to Sammy's mum, dining train manager Jill, and the missing stock is located. Morning. Morning. But as they start the preparations, another problem soon becomes apparent. Quarter past seven and it's already 30 degrees. Yorkshire Day takes place on the 1st of August, and this year it's slap bang in the middle of a heat wave. Jill knows daughter Sammy can be a bit of a hothead, and this could bode bad. I hope it's not too hot for the chefs in the kitchens, because tempers will flare. Everyone is going to struggle to keep cool today. The 100 plus diners have paid for the hot menu, and by heck, they're going to enjoy it, whatever the weather. Full house, just about. For starters, it's deep fried spam fritters. And steaming vegetable soup, always a bit risky on a moving train. I'm rushing now to see if we can get them out before the train actually goes, because if it jolts, it's either going to burn me or there'll be just flames everywhere. Oh dear. A hot roast with Yorkshire puddings. And still, the temperature's going up. 47 now. Can it get any hotter? That's 49 degrees now. I forgot to bake the apples. Well, I didn't forget. Well, I did forget to bake them. I knew I had to bake them, but I forgot to bake them. Oh, dear, Sammy. She did come to me and say she forgot to bake the apple, so unfortunately, sorry, no one got right, baked apple. But she did lots of crackling. Cheers, mate. At least there's the Yorkshire brewed beer, cider and wine. Yeah. Sammy has kept her cool throughout the entire event. They've pulled it off. And the punters loved it. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll pop it in. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Bless you. It's just the fact that this is volunteers, mainly, doing this job. Um, couldn't fault the whole experience. With one day to go until his wedding, Mark is working hard to make sure his beloved B1 engine is past fit to pull his reception train. You can see a lot by just looking it's been taken off the line for a service. The first stage of this is called a washout. When we do washouts every 28 steaming days, that's basically where we, we pull all the washout plugs. There's one here. It goes inside the boiler. We can basically put a hose in, give it a good washing out, get all the scale, all the rubbish out. That's the sort of stuff we're trying to get out. If you look in the bottom of the kettle, you'll, you'll see some of that. It's just it's a little bit of lime scale from the water. If we were to leave that in the boiler and keep using it, keep using it, and keep using it, that will effectively just constantly keep building up, building up to a point where there's no actual water in there anymore. And all I do is then overheat the plates and then, and then well, it'll cause a catastrophic failure potentially of the boiler. With the washout completed, it's crunch time as the B1 faces its safety inspection. Engineer Andrew, a.k.a. Bungle, is practising the traditional art of wheel tapping. Tapping round this is effectively what someone at Whitby would have been doing in 1964, before the line shut. Although this may look like he's randomly hitting the train with a hammer, this age-old technique helps determine if there are any faults in the metal by the sound the hammer makes. If it doesn't ring true, there's probably something wrong. You could be looking for anything. I mean, it could be a cracked wheel at the worst case, or there could be a little nut that's came loose. The B1's running gear is good to go. Are we all right, Jim? Hi, Andrew, yeah, how are you? So, how is this thing coming on? Beautiful. Oh, we're off the mark, excellent. 
So now it's time to safety check the boiler. And as it builds up a head of steam, the B1 faces the toughest part of its test. What we're going to do is we're going to move it up and down the yard. James is going to drive it up. And we're going to check that the valves are tight and check the drain cocks work. So the drain cocks are blocked. And we could blow a cylinder up effectively if I'm getting too much water in there. It could be right off the engine. So we just want to test all that works. Fortunately, the B1 gets Bungle's seal of approval. Hey, Jeffrey, should be good to go for the weekend. So, on happy B1. Thank you. The B1 has passed the safety inspection with flying colours, and she'll be ready to pull the wedding train tomorrow after some finishing touches. So, we're going to clean it up to within an inch of its life. It's going to be cleaner than it was in 1947 when it was built. There we go, that's ready for Mark. Poor old Kieran hasn't even got a wedding car to polish. He's still on the trail of a replacement for Mark's big day. But he's got distracted. Uh, what's he called? Max. Max. Oh, a bit tired from his walk, I think. The ferret has taken quite a fancy to Kieran. And he's gone to sleep on me. <laughs> Babies. A spot of ferret fencing is all well and good, but Kieran, okay. you've still got a car to find. You're too tired to walk. Come, baby. There you go. Come, baby. Come. Maxie. Back at the railway, just when it looked like everything was on track for Mark and Emma's wedding, there's another potential spanner in the works. With the engines working at their limit on the railway's gold timetable, another loco has developed a fault. Yeah, it's all hands on deck now to try and get, get that remedied so we can get it back out and earning some money. The knock-on effect is that the B1, which should be cleaned and decorated for Mark's wedding, has been urgently pressed back into service. I should have been here to come do some decoration on the engine, and it's not here. It's out pulling trains. Barney! You! It's gone! <laughs> you pinched it! Yeah. This failed this morning. Right, OK. So we had to send it out. Andrew made the executive decision to send it out. This is mended now. Lovely. So this will go back out again tomorrow. I'm going to come down later on once it gets back, because what's it due back here at 6 o'clock-ish? Then it goes out on the diner, because there's not enough engines. You are joking. I'm not. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> The B1's reassignment to pull the evening diner train means it may not be back in time for Mark to decorate it for his wedding. Coming up... Yeah! Kieran chances upon a surprise replacement wedding car. Look at this. Emma can't believe what it is. Oh, it is! Look at it! And Mark's worst fears over his battered sausage are realised. There was only one sausage in batter order. Oh, no. The North Yorkshire Moors Railway has become a popular wedding venue. There have been 22 booked over the summer season. But for those who work on the railway, tomorrow's is the most significant. Boiler Smith Mark is marrying his steam-mad fiance, Emma. And that's why Mark's friend Kieran is frantically trying to find anyone who can provide the wedding car he's promised. He calls an old friend, Joe, to see if she has any leads. Hello. How are you doing? Not too bad, are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm in a... What can I do for this on-off call? Well, you, you should be very honoured to have me here. I'm in a bit of a mess, actually. I'm just what? with Sean now. We're hoping to use his Camaro, but we can't get gear. When's wedding? Saturday. I know it's... Uh, oh. Yes, I know. Oh. Um... What time on Saturday do you know? I'll, I'll get you at times. I think it's about half ten. Half ten. And what, are you wanting to go through and have a look at the car tonight? If it's all right, yes. Yeah. That's what I can do, are you all right? Thanks, bye. 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 Kieran arranges to meet Joe, who may be able to help. It's last chance saloon for Mark. Hopefully, all will end well. I'm hoping so, you know what I mean? 
I've got no wood to touch, carbon fiber, but hopefully. Joe's friend Steve is a collector of American cars. Hi there, I'm Kieran. Nice to see you. I'm Steve. Can I be cheeky and ask for your car for a wedding? Because you're our last option, you know what I mean? Well, Mark wanted Kieran to find him an American muscle car with a bit of character. Let's see what he's got. Wow, look at this. Yes, it's the General Lee, the car from the hit TV series and Hollywood movie, The Dukes of Hazard. I want it. I want to get married now myself. Oh, I love this. I've spent every Saturday watching this thing, jumping. <laughs> and this car is no pay limitation. It comes with a showbiz stamp of approval. But if you watch the programme, you'll remember Daisy Duke. Oh, yes, I remember Daisy. Yeah. She signed this one. Did she? Oh, wow. Here. It says, for Stephen Craig, that's my son, you have the most incredible and beautiful general way in England. I love it. Love you guys. Catherine back, Daisy Duke. That's absolutely amazing. amazing. A 1969 7.4 litre V8 Dodge Charger General Lee. A car that was actually used on screen. Somehow, Kieran has managed to tick all the boxes. So tonight has gone from being a complete and utter disaster to a success. We have now managed to secure the ultimate car of all, the General Lee. And uh, we've done it, we've saved Mark's wedding. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Kieran. It should turn heads, though. It's almost midnight before Mark and best man Mike get their hands on the B1. It's about half past 11 at night time, uh, a day before the wedding. So we're here to get all the headboard on, we're getting the decorations on, um, and then head back to Pickering to go to bed so that we can get up first thing in the morning so I can get married. Best man's duties, what, what can you say? This isn't the first time me and him have been out at midnight doing silly things with trains. They might be burning the midnight oil, but Mark won't slack on getting his engine looking fabulous for the big day. Right, uh, underneath that one around to come under here first. Rather than us. Mark and best man Mike go back years, and it was an interest in steam engines that drew them together. I first met Mark uh, probably about 1997, 1998 at the Churnit Valley Railway. Uh, Mark was a 14 year old. 14 child. year old who was massively enthusiastic, asking tens of questions about this, that, and everything. Some things never change, really. And it's Mark's devotion to this particular steam engine that has taken priority on his last night of freedom. Well, the reason we're here now and not sleep and not in the pub or wherever is because this engine's kind of been there through it all. And it's, it's, it's almost like part of the family, really. They're not just engines, they're, they're, they come alive, you know, and when they put a fire in them, you can hear the sounds now, it's just, it's just resting ready for tomorrow, really. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna describe what it was, you would say it was, you'd probably say it was the other woman in your life. Steady on, lad. Not sure what Emma would have to say about that. Pick it up, Mike, all right? Yeah, finished. What do you reckon? Looks superb. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yep. Do you she'll like it? I think she'll love it. Yeah, it? Worth it. Well, half one in the morning. I think we better go, eh, mate? Yeah, let's get out of Let's here. go. Cool. It's the morning of Mark and Emma's wedding. At the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, preparations are in full swing. In Scarborough, the bride is surprisingly calm. It's going pretty good. We're pretty, pretty chill at the minute. Are you ready to go now? Yeah. Bye, bye. Right, see you later. Let's, let's go. At 13 miles away in Pickering, the late night decorating the B1 has taken its toll on Mark and best man Mike. To do with the cards. Cards. They're the place name cards that we need to sort out. Emma still doesn't know what her wedding car is going to be. She's in for a surprise. It's not the General Lee. It's not. It is. It is. Oh, it is. Look at it. Taxi 
<laughs> so, Mark. Uh, no, sorry, Emma. It's so Kieran. But you'll get to thank him later. Your car is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so gorgeous. Thankfully, despite his earlier panic, Mark has made it to the station in good time. As the star of the show, the B1, pulls in, the wedding reception can kick off in style. Now Mark, Emma and, not forgetting baby Matilda, can enjoy the grand festivities laid on by their colleagues at the NYMR. They're on the train. Phew. There should be a sausage in that The events manager, Tim, has it all under control. Right, that's for Mark, the groom. Right until one of the guests has a special request. Well, short of a battered sausage, please. No, there was only one on the order. It was no, there, there's more than... Yes, the bridegroom's much-anticipated battered sausage is in danger, until Tim puts his foot down. There was only one sausage in batter ordered, right. and that was for Mark the groom. All right, then. And it was all going so well. <laughs> Crisis averted, and Mark can enjoy his battered sausage in newly wedded bliss. It's been absolutely amazing. They've been absolutely amazing with us. Just what more could you want? Gorgeous sunny day, steam train. It's been a superb effort by the staff and volunteers of the NYMR, making Mark and Emma's special day one to remember. The whole crew here have really pulled all of the stops out of the bag for us because. They are friends and they wanted us to have such a special day. So it means a lot that everyone's been able to come, everyone's been able to enjoy the train. It's been a really, really fantastic day. Look, you get a free teddy. I can recommend it. And there's still one more surprise for Mark. Look at that, that's amazing! Wow! Oh, this is awesome! That's absolutely amazing! Steve, oh, he's our hero. Cheers, mate, you well, are an absolute legend. Well, legend. Well, I to do it for you. Yeah, and you, my friend, oh, also a legend. Next time, the train mad ticket collecting Rose Twins take on new railway challenges. Apparently, there's cows on the line on network rail. Piglet gets to grips with steam crane operation. Ready when you are, Charlie. I think it's time to go before I cause any more damage. And an engine doesn't want to make its 100th birthday celebration. Bit of a nightmare, really.